Okay, let's talk about uh, the project settings. If you press this button over here, you're going to have access to all these project settings or eventually if you simply press outside any track, also going to uh, open this. Um, so let's see what are the settings of your project. First of all, this one gives you information on what you want to include on your project file. So you are working on a project, you save the project, uh, and then you can say by default, it's going to include all the rendered audio because you have you are using the project, you have rendered something, and then you save it, you want to open again, you want what was already rendered to appear over there. So by default, the render is there. Eventually, could there be a situation where you don't want to include any rendered audio because you want to save files with a smaller size or something like that. The, the problem is that you're going to re-render everything when you open the, pro the project. And also there is another choice over here that allows you to include all the original audio files within the same project file, which means that if you are ch changing computers and you don't want to have problems with paths and things like that and folder locations, you can eventually, if you want to include all the original audio files also, on the project file, of course, it's going to increase their size, but uh, but you, sometimes you prefer this than worrying about the path and trying to locate the missing audio files. Also, there is this sample rate of your project. This is the sample rate that you want to consider within your project. Um, as you can see, there is the, the, the standard values in here. If you want, you can even create a custom sample rate because eventually you may be using a project that has, that you want to use a very strange sample rate so everything is still possible and also this is gives you information what is the sample rate that the actual your actual hardware is using so you can create a project with a different sample rate which means that you render everything in this case at 48 kilohertz and then you export audio using this sample rate but you are your hardware could have could be using a different sample rate which means that you don't need to worry because during playback the the software will automatically resample everything for the, the for the sample rate of your audio interface so it's only to give you information this is the the main thing that it's going to render uh, and it's going to be used internally. Uh, also, another thing that eventually it's important to know is as you increase your sample rate, of course, it's going to be a, a much more complex render process. So eventually, if even if you are working with a higher sample rate or something like that, eventually when you are starting doing things, you could lower the sample rate only to make your renders a little faster during the, the initial parts of your tests and things like that. Also, we have the sound propagation uh, information, which means that it's going to tell how do you want to, to propagate sound on your virtual space. By default, the air delay is uh, it's enabled, which means that the, the system will consider that from the moment your particle is emitting sound until that sound reaches the microphone it's going to have some delay because of the, the speed of sound by default the system software the system considers this value you can change the what is the the speed of sound or eventually can disable and say okay i don't want the, any air delay to be considered i want the sound from all particles to get to the virtual microphone exactly at the same time, no matter how distance they are. Also, you have this distance attenuation that allows you to control how much attenuation do you want to, to use with distance. By default, if a particle is further away, it's going to be more attenuated than another particle that is closer to the virtual microphone and this is quite important fact uh, parameter because this allows you to control how do you want 
to balance the sound between the background objects and the foreground objects, which means that sometimes uh, if sometimes you want to capture essentially what is closer to the virtual microphone, so you have a higher attenuation, which means that uh, this will highly attenuate sounds. Some other times you want even the sounds that are further away to not be so much attenuated as such. So essentially this gives you what is the attenuation that you want and almost like a depth of field that balance foreground uh, and background sounds. Another important thing when using distance attenuation is this minimal distance because as you see, if you are moving sounds uh, away from the virtual microphone, it's going to be attenuated. And if you are bringing sounds near the, micro the microphone, it's going to be amplified. So as you can see, if as you come bringing the sounds closer and closer and closer and closer to the microphone, it's going to be amplified and amplified. Amplified and so essentially you could create a problem where the sound is so amplified that you no longer listen to to any other sound because after the render and the normalization you will, will end up only listening to the sound that is happening for instance one millimeter away from your virtual microphone which means that to prevent clipping all other sounds will be completely attenuated so essentially this allows you to tell that okay as the, sim, as the sound comes close to the virtual microphone, after this distance, you, you stop uh, amplifying the sound. So essentially, it's going to amplify every sound as it comes close to the microphone, but only until this valve. And after that, imagine in this case, I'm saying that, okay, you have um, one-tenth of a meter. so. It doesn't matter if the sound is uh, one millimeter away from the virtual microphone or uh, two centimeters or something like that. It's going to have exactly the same gain because they are already on this minimal distance uh, considered. And then also, eventually, in some situations, you can even mute particles that are closer than this uh, minimal distance. By default, we are going. The system is going to render with. Uh, as they were at this distance, but sometimes you may want to mute particles if they are too close to the microphone. And also you can enable or disable the Doppler effect. By default, the system considers the Doppler effect. And so you get this passing by and all this pitch information that is changed through to movement. But sometimes you may want to disable, for instance, imagine that you are working with music and you don't want the sounds of instruments to be uh, detuned so you can disable Doppler effect and it doesn't matter how much do you change the parameters over here if if imagine that at some point you don't know exactly what were the, the original settings you can simply reset settings and then everything comes back to what is their uh, original default values.